Hi, my name is Jackie Salcedo. My pronouns are she, her, hers, ella. Um, and I am the academic advisor for women's and gender studies. I'm so glad you are considering WGS as your major. I am gonna give you a little tour of the place. So yeah, here I am, I'm at the front desk. We are in Burdine Hall, B-U-R on the map, right? We have this beautiful mural at the front of the office. So this is by a, uh, a, a Brazilian graffiti group called Grupo Opni, and you can look them up on Instagram. That's their, their social media handle. Um, came in and did this wonderful art in March of 2020, <laughs> right before um, the spring break that never ended. Um, we'll just leave it at that. And, um, but now we're back on campus. So we have this lovely space in the front where we, uh, you know, greet our students and, you know, people come through making, you know, meetings and things like that. Uh, we have a bunch of like stickers, like feminist stickers, LGBTQ studies stickers and buttons. Like right now we have a bunch of pronoun buttons, a bunch of LGBTQ buttons. And yeah, so if you come through the front glass doors, which are behind me now, because I'm already inside, you can come through here. And our um, director's office is right here. So it's Dr. Kristen Smith, who's a professor in anthropology and also our director. Come through this door and you'll see the hallway where our staff offices are including my office. I am the academic advisor, like I already said, but um, this is my office. So yeah, this is my board, my stickers and things. And um, yeah, I'm trying to be on campus Tuesday, Wednesday, um, but yeah, you can like call me, um, uh, well, email me um, and then on Calendly, like schedule an appointment and we can talk over Zoom. Anyway, so this is our little hallway the LGBTQ studies offices are here. This is Dr. Lisa Moore's office. Um, and then we have a few more staff offices down here. And then we have this wonderful gender inclusive bathroom in Burdine on the fifth floor. Yeah, so that's Burdine Hall. And then I'm gonna go back all around so you can see kind of what it looks like when you get off the elevators. So yeah, we have this beautiful purple hallway. I'm kind of biased. It's one of my favorite colors. And then, yeah, so if you're in Burdine, when you come off the elevators, right, um, you know, you'll see windows in front of you and stuff. Just go to the right. You want to come off the elevators, go to the right, and you'll see our double doors. And I'm the only one in the office today, but here we are. It's like, Center for Women's and Gender Studies, welcome. Yeah, so I am also gonna look over the uh, degree plan with you and we'll get that started. Okay, I'm back. And um, I wanna share with you the WGS degree plan. We're just gonna go over the major requirements because um, it is a lot to cover. So here we go. I am sharing my screen. This is the um, degree plan for women's and gender studies. Um, I'm zoomed in real tight to like a, a, a page that's got two columns. So first I'm gonna go over the left-hand side, um, just in, as a general recap, you'll hear this in, in many different places, hopefully during orientation, but this is the um, core requirements. So there's gonna be core requirements that everyone at UT has to take, um, satisfy, and then you'll have some flag requirements and then you'll have liberal arts requirements. And it also will tell you that if your core requirement and your liberal arts requirements are the same and how to, um, how to get those uh, requirements out of the way. So you do need a first year signature course, a UGS 302 or 303. You'll need an English composition, rhetoric 306. You'll need a literature class, um, Sometimes you have a humanities class, but if you get a literature class, it'll also count for your liberal arts literature. So that's why we recommend English 316 L, M, N, or P. So it's going to be British Lit, American Lit, or World Lit. Um, if you look in the course schedule, um, you do need Government 310 and Government 
government 310L and government 312L. Both of those are going to be government classes, but the one of them is going to have um, some Texas government in there too. Um, then you need two classes that satisfy the U.S. History Corps uh, requirements, and those are wonderful. You can take them, um, you know, now you have like different titles. You don't have to take 1492 to 1776. Um, you can take other kinds of histories as long as it has the U.S. Corps um, on there. I will, um, you know, show you how to do that in a second um, when you look at the course schedule. And then there's also going to be uh, social and behavioral sciences, uh, math. You need your science and technology part one and part two, and then visual and performing arts. Um, let me get my course schedule up so I can show you what that looks like. I'm going to pause the recording if I can. There we go. Okay, so here is our fall um, course schedule. And this is kind of how you look up courses. There's different ways you can look at the fields, field of study. You know, you can look at a uh, core curriculum. So this is how you look for certain courses that would satisfy either visual and performing arts, natural science, technology, social behavioral science. And the US history is one of my favorites to look at because you get to see all the different types of history that would count for your core. So um, you could do like an intro to Native American histories. You could do um, main currents of Amer American culture since 1865. Ooh, just so much different things. Um, South Asian migration to the US, um, history of Mexican Americans in the US, all kinds of different topics that you would not talk about in high school. But um, just a couple things. So um, this is the unique number, the five digit unique number that you use to register for the class. Um, this, the first uh, three digits of the class will tell you if it's upper division or lower division. If you're a freshman or if you're a first year student or a sophomore, um, you want to take lower division courses. So that's anything that's 319 or lower, 320 or higher is going to be an upper division class. Um, and those classes are reserved for juniors and seniors. And the history department is like pretty strict about that. So if you are a freshman or a sophomore, do sign up for lower division history classes or wait until you are um, junior, senior. So you can take those upper division history classes. But um, I did want to show you also. So um, these are the 317s. These are all lower divisions. If you see a class that looks really cool and you're like, oh my goodness, what is this? Um, you can sometimes get more information on the course. Um, the other thing you could do is check to see if it's cross-listed with any other any other field of study. So this one, this intro to Native American histories is also listed under American Studies 315. So you just click on that. And if say there's classes, seats open in the history section, but aren't you know, open in American studies, you can take it in the history section and it'll count for either whichever one you need. And you can do that with a lot of different classes. Um, so yeah, just to recap, um, you can look for the core designation on the right hand side, you can do a search by that. And then upper division is 320 or higher, lower division is 319 um, or lower. So just think 320 or higher for upper division. Okay, so I'm gonna switch gears. I am gonna do a, what am I? Back to the degree requirements. So we're talking about UGS. Um, so these are all the core requirements. I already showed you how to look up the cores in the course schedule. Um, writing flags will be those little uh, squares that we saw on some of the classes. Let me pull that up again because um, you'll see these little yellow squares that there's a uh, writing flag, a cultural diversity flag, global culture flag, cultural diversity. So they have little initials like WR and CD and things like that. So um, the degree requirements are that you have at least one of each flags and you'll need uh, several writing flags. So one, two, three writing flags, the quantitative reasoning flag, 
um, cultural diversity in the United States flag, global cultures flag, ethics flag, and independent inquiry flag. All of these you can get, um, most of them you can get by not taking extra classes. You'll see that some of them are already bundled in the courses that you have to take for your major. The one class that, that liberal arts students might have to do a little bit more leg work to, to get the QR flag is the quantitative reasoning. Um, that's because those are usually attached to uh, math or science classes. The class that I recommend for the QR flag is Math 302. That is a math class that is designed for liberal arts majors and is supposed to make it like less scary. So Math 302 for the QR flag and then everything else um, you can get pretty much through your major. Um, yeah. Okay. So liberal arts requirements. We talked about English literature, how you need an English uh, 316, either L, M, N, or P to satisfy your English literature. Um, then we also talked about um, some of the classes in your major will also count for other requirements. So like the 356 that's required for women's and gender studies as a major is also a social science for liberal arts. So that would cover that. The math Math 302 for liberal arts majors, so definitely take that one. And then cultural expression, human experience, and thought. We can get that from Math 305, which is the intro to the WGS major. Um, one thing I did want to go over is that students need a fourth semester proficiency in a foreign language, and that's unique to liberal arts. So um, a lot of the languages at UT are... Um, accelerated so you'll see either you know two six hour classes um and that's four semesters worth of, of foreign language or you'll see three classes a sequence um and it's just that um, there are different ways to do it if you take foreign language at community college just keep finishing it at community college until you get through the fourth semester because the numbering is off um, a lot of community colleges don't have the accelerated numbers. So I'll um, pull up a sheet to show you a little bit more of that. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up a sheet. This is through the liberal arts webpage. Um, they have, if you go to liberalarts.utexas.edu and look at undergrad students under majors and minors, there's this list called the core and liberal arts course list. It will, oops. Uh, my lights went out, those motion sensor lights. And they're back on. Okay, so that's the Zoom editing for you. Okay, so then these are the um, course lists that are my advising cheat sheet, but they list everything. So if we're looking at foreign language, we can zoom in here. It's gonna be on the third column on the left here. So um, you see that, uh, Arabic at UT is only two courses, 601C and 611C, but you're done in two semesters, but it's fourth semester proficiency. So it's accelerated. The classes are six hours instead of three. Um, here you can see that um, Bengali, Bengali is four semesters. That's the old school numbering. So all classes, all languages at UT used to be 506, 507, 312K, 312L. But more recently, you have languages like Danish, Dutch, French, these are all classes that have accelerated and combined their semesters so that you only have to take two semesters and you'll have four semester proficiency. Um, but there are different ways to, you know, go about it for uh, Spanish is a really popular language at UT. So you have the 601D, the 610D, and then the 311. So that's three semesters. Or if you're a heritage uh, speaker, so you either took a lot of Spanish in high school or speak it at home, it's only two classes that you need if you, if you haven't done like the AP testing and stuff. Some students test out of um, foreign language, but uh, for heritage speakers, it's 604 and 311J and you're done. You have four semester proficiency. So th those are just some of the languages that are available at UT. Um, you don't have to choose right now, but it'd be good to start thinking about it. I'm gonna pull up, go back to the, um, degree plan here. So that, yeah, that was the foreign language. So that's the liberal arts requirements in addition to the flags and the core requirements. So let's talk about WGS as a major. Deep breath. <gasps> okay, so uh, the 305 is the intro to the major. We also have some 301s on the course schedule, but the 305 is the major 
intro that we want students to take. Um, if you see a 301 that you love, um, you do have room for one more lower division class on your course schedule. Remember, uh, upper division is 320 or higher. So you do have room for a 305, a 301, and then there's, well, you could do a 301 or a 303. You have room for one more lower division class down here. The rest of them have to be upper division. So if you're a freshman and you're not really sure what you, what you want to do this semester, I would take the WGS 305 and I would work on everything else that you need for your core and your, w, your liberal arts requirements. Um, so take the 305. Um, the WGS 303 is really popular because it's the intro to LGBTQ studies. Yay, LGBTQ studies. Um, yeah, so the 303 is the intro to LGBTQ studies. You can take that one and you can take the 305. That's two lower division classes for your WGS major. Um, then the upper division courses, we are less strict. So you can take an upper division course if you feel ready. Like if you feel ready, you know, you want, you're up to the challenge, do it. Um, just make sure you, it's not listed as a history class. If it's a history class, they are strict. They will call me and say, why is there this sophomore in your class? Um, yeah. Hi, history, if you're watching. Okay. So um, 340s. Uh, you can take one 340 and then either another 340 or a 335, as long as they have different topics, um, titles, different titles, different, you know, subject matter and stuff. Don't take the same class twice because you can't get credit. Um, so it'll have different topics on the course schedule. And um, let me see if I can show you that. Okay, here we are. We're looking at the fall upper division courses. So we have some that are cross-listed with sociology. Um, if you click on the unique number, you can see what class it's listed as, and that class itself has its own unique number. Um, then if you scroll down, we have the 335s, right? So you can take a 335 or a 340. So here are some of the 335s, and then the 340s start here. So you have all different titles. You can take um, one or two of these 340s towards your WGS degree, and the titles will be different every semester. Um, three, th 345 does not mean, is not the same as a 340, so don't try to like take that because it won't work out. Um, but you could take it if you wanted to take it for a different requirement. So um, like I said, 340 and then a second 340 or a 335. Feminist theory. So there are a couple of classes that are only offered once a year. Feminist theory is one of them. Feminist theory is only offered in the spring semester. Intro to research methods is only offered in the fall semester. And senior seminar is only offered in the spring semester. So we are a small major. We have about 56 students. Um, so that means that we get to know each other. You know, I get to know the students that come through, you know, you know, three, four years, five years, and it's it's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah. The internship or research and thesis is an independent study. Um, I have more info on that on our webpage. Um, I have a couple of YouTube videos on our webpage that sort of explain like what, what they are. Um, but yeah, you don't have to worry about that until like junior or senior year. And then senior seminar, like I said, is offered once a year in the spring. And then you have room for two more upper division classes. So anything that you saw, you know, that, you know, you want to take, you saw another 335 you wanted to take or another 340 you wanted to take or a 345, that'll count right there. So um, the WGS major is 30 hours. So that's 10 classes in women's and gender studies. And then you have um, room here for a minor or certificate. Unfortunately, you cannot do the certificate in the LGBTQ studies because computer sees it as like the same field of study because everything's listed under WGS. Um, so there is that, but the other um, certificates and minors are available to you, um, except for WGS. You can't minor in your major and all that stuff. And then if you are a transfer student, you do need to have 60 hours in residence. Um, so that means at least, you know, if you're thinking about five, five hours, five, five classes a semester, 15 hours a semester, that's like fall, spring, fall, spring. So that's at least two years. 
uh, doing 15 hours each semester. Um, just a heads up, because some people like don't realize that, yeah, you do have to do at least two years at UT in order to get a degree from UT. Um, so yeah, but overall, a bachelor's degree is 120 hours. And then that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. And then on the back of the degree plan are going to be the liberal arts minors and the certificates. So there's all kinds of stuff. Um, and we can talk if you have questions. Um, what else? I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I will let you go so you can watch the rest of this Prezi. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Bye.